Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show, the great show, where we are witnessing the second most important match, not only of today, but maybe of the decade. We are, of course, talking about the semi final of the Pepe Cuenca and Divis Invitational between two rising stars of the chess world, Jan Shishtov Duda and Vladislav Artemyov. And who better? to explain to us what's happening in this match. Then their future opponent in the finals, Peter Svidler, who just won his semi-final match. Peter, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Those guys must be must be licking their chops right now. All that dead money waiting for them in the final. Did you start saying something humble, self-deprecating? What's wrong with you today? <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. But for, I mean, for a change, I genuinely feel like, uh, uh, I mean, I, I played both of them. I kind of know how it feels and uh, I'm not intending to, to give up or resign in advance or anything, but I, I've had some experience of playing these guys at faster time controls. Uh, and I think online it's going to be even more painful. That's, yeah, not out of character for you to say. You just crushed an online wizard, Nino Anton, who play, spends like all the eight hours per day that he's awake playing online blitz. I was a bit surprised by that, but uh, I think for me, uh, generally, I struggle the most against people who are faster than me. And uh, uh, Nino, somewhat surprisingly, is actually slower than me. At least he's, uh, you know, he gets to a point where he needs to be the first one. Uh, you know, playing on 10 seconds. And then he still, of course, uh, uh, I mean, his APM is better than mine, but uh, I, I, I was constantly finding myself with more time out of the opening, which is unbelievably comfortable for me because it's right. really not what I'm used to. There we see the guys that are still chatting, discussing the rules. Vladislav Artemyov and Jan Shishtov Duda. Artemyov from Siberia, which is far away from other stuff in Russia, right? Is that fair to say? <sighs> what exactly? How far is like uh, Tomsk from Moscow, for example? Uh, I'd be very worried if I had to hazard a guess, but like maybe 4,000 kilometers. Right. No, that's probably a bit too much. Maybe three, um, and I think he's from. We we've we, we've gone through this, and we're back to uncertainty on this topic. Yeah, I think he's from Omsk, and I think you were correct about it the previous time. But uh, you can actually ask, right? Omsk to Moscow uh, distance two point six, two point seven, but yeah. Four was way, way, way wrong, but three is not horrible. And it looks like we are about to begin. Sorry for all the chatter in the background. I believe they will actually shut up once they start playing. I heard sure. nothing. <clears throat> yeah, but the people do. Now, now it's quiet. Because okay. I'm a Zoom call with these boys. And here we mm -hmm. are, Vlad Artemyov with the white pieces against. Jan Shishtov Duda, a.k.a. Husarios with the black pieces. And Artemyov, as he does, plays a bit of a quiet sideline, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a, it's yet another way of playing the English without pretending to, to even aim for. Although, I mean, if black just goes d6, we kind of transpose to, uh, to known lines. But I think in those known lines, white generally tries not to play bishop d2, so... I don't think White is that unhappy about these developments, although, you know, Black's position still remains perfectly, uh, perfectly healthy. We have bishops now? Could go b4, yeah. queen d7, rook e1 rookie, rookie one, exactly, yeah. Or even that, yeah, that, that's what they often do given, given half a chance. And now I guess we take and we start on the 97. 97 of 86 now? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, but these positions, I think these days they're supposed to be slightly better for White. Because I think the evaluation kind of shifted towards uh, more respect for the bishop g2 f4 f5 mate on the king side plan, which 
uh, I, I think we kind of used to scoff at that and say, you know, there is no mate, there's never any mate there, but... Uh, and uh, after A5, yeah, I think uh, Vlad is also justified in maybe uh, uh, seeing if we can get something going on the queen side as well. Yep. Somewhat, somewhat pleasant for white. I don't think it's anything special, but... Mm. None of these guys are big theoreticians, of course. By twenty-seven fifty standards. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but they're both tremendous practical players. No, like yeah. maybe a little different. I think of Duda more as a super sharp tactician, and mm -hmm. of Artemiev more as a someone with great instincts in end games and all types of chess. But of course, it's a simplification. They're both extremely yeah. good. Yeah, and uh, obviously. Uh, once again, I think I've already made that mistake once, but uh, to my mind, still the the, the most exciting thing uh, Duda has ever done was that that chase he gave uh, Magnus in Saint Petersburg in the World Blitz, where Magnus basically vacuumed the entire field and scored something like plus thirteen, something obscene, and he won that race by half a point from from Duda and. You don't see that very often. Two people just absolutely destroying a field as stacked as as, as that tournament was. Uh, so yeah, he the, the, the once again I <laughs> the whole get off my lawn vibe is maybe uh, should be toned down a little bit. But the kid can definitely play. I don't know. I don't know if we're allowed to call them. I mean, they're how how old is uh, young Shishtov? 23-ish? 22, I would guess. <clears throat> but probably we can find out by asking... Mr. Google, yeah, he's 21. People in chat. He's 21. How can they always be 21? Like, don't they ever age? Yeah, also, it's... So, uh... Artemiev, every time I check, he's like 21 too. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit bizarre. And, and frankly, I, I think... Uh... Uh, if we return to what's happening on the board uh, instead of the bio information, A yeah, I, I don't quite like what Artemiev has done to his position because we haven't actually started doing anything productive on the on the king side yet, and we have given up the only open file on the board. It's not going to be that easy for Black to exploit, but you you definitely take Black now. In a practical game, I think you 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 definitely take Black, and you you expect Black to be the one driving the action. And this is an attempt to kind of break free, which uh, might work or it might backfire quite quite badly because that pawn is potentially quite weak. Just takes queen a6. Uh, ain't I attacking a lot of your pawns? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see I didn't see queen a6. That's a nice spot by both uh, both you and young Shishtov. Yeah, after queen a6, it, it might just be bad. Just flat out, uh, flat out bad for white. Although you can play queen before queen d3, rook f3. Without the rook of three move, I think you just resign here. But because that tactic exists, maybe there is still a chance. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, if you allow... rook d three, yeah. But then I take I'm, I don't know I take on b seven. Yeah, but I will I will get mated anyway in that end game. Yeah. It might still be the best. I mean, if he allows knight takes c five here, he just resigns. I don't think he has better options. But um, yeah, I don't I don't disagree. It's just bad. He goes rook f3, does allow knight c5. He might I'm surprised disagree on because, the resigning part. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's not resigning, obviously, but what I mean is, this position I just don't see uh, where your counterplay is going to come from. f5, f hoping to get some f6 in, but it feels yeah. very little. No, but black just can swap everything off the board now, exactly. Just take on d3. The endgame is utterly lost because the knight will land on e5 and then the d and c pawns just queen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, should be should be reasonably uh, reasonably easy to convert this. Why is Dacino saying seriously? I wonder if people at Artemio's level struggle to make ends meet in Siberia. I would guess not. Uh, hmm. I should open the chat as well. Actually, now that. Um, now that I have this set up. So Dodger is saying for sure the commute costs alone must be crippling. 
I had some nice trips to Siberia with Ute Air. Wasn't that expensive, the ticket on Ute Air? No, I think <clears throat> I think domestic air travel in uh, in Russia these days is uh, not as not as crippling as you would expect. Ute uh, Air, they have the slogan: "We fly in any weather conditions." It's very reassuring. <laughs> it's true too. I don't doubt it. But no, how long is that flight? Probably not even that long, right? Hour and a half, two hours. There you are. Well, not. No, that's probably closer to three, I would expect. But um, Moscow to Omsk, you mean? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, it has to be closer to three, but I don't think it's too too, too far above three. I think Duda is now closer to three points up as well. So you could yeah. resign. It's not yeah, checks. I think. I think by this point it's, uh, uh, but I mean, just, just playing this out and, uh, yeah, of course, I'm not uh, really resign shaming here. Of course you make some more moves, but it looks fairly hopeless. Yeah. Just, just warm up, you know, get your, get your mouse hand to work out a little bit, but, uh, yeah, you don't expect to save these positions against, against somebody like Duda. Yeah. Who knows if the mouse hand already had it work. Um, let's play. So Duda up one zero. Yep. And uh, oh, well, okay, that's uh, nine of six. Is that how he does it? He's played this before. I I think people just instantly play three five against him. So I suspect we just don't know what he does against nine c three. That was actually but what I'm, I thought. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's it's kind of curious because I I honestly can't remember a single game of his. In the you know quote unquote classical Kara. Mm, and here's there's some move order flirting here with some early bishop e6, queen c7. Yeah. I say I don't really know subtleties. Queen c2 is what they usually is do he, with white. Yeah. Is he hinting that he will castle queen side here with black or something? Certainly hinting. Maybe he's also saying your move, sir. Mm, but bishop e3 looks fairly natural, and he does castle queen side. I understand this line is not so pointless. I'd just be so worried because I have that lost pawn end game. I I know it's not that simple, but it would yeah, always yeah. be in the back of my head if I played this. Sure. No, I mean, Magnus played this line against me, so... Uh... Even he suffered, though. <laughs> yeah, he. I think he had a decent position, and then... In a, in a stunning turn of event that I, events, I kind of out-calculated him in some short tactics. And yeah, that end game. I think if he is white and and I am black in the end game, I got. I think that that game in, ends in a white victory. But because the colors were reversed, I didn't really even come close. That was regrettable. That was a. I'm low compared to you. I guess people mean the volume and not my posture. I can mess with that. That is better now. Um. Yeah, c5 I think was required, but also a very logical move after g5. We play bishop g4, we get rid of that bishop, uh, we play g6. Ideally, we even trade the dark squared bishops and we leave white with that slightly pointless light squared bishop somewhere on the g3 squares, which has no particular future. Um, so. Not d5, yeah. not forest, right? King b1. Absolutely or not. You can go. To my... <laughs> Yeah, King B1 always is a move. Even H3 actually to stop Bishop G4 uh, definitely uh, definitely deserves some attention. Knight C3 is a move you can make here, to which I think Black is supposed to reply A6 because allowing Knight B5 feels painful. Uh, but um, yeah, no. But obviously C4 C5 was a very very large threat. It was not. Uh, it had to be. It had to be stopped. Not an aggressive gesture. Yeah, so, who's the most tactically aware young player, asks uh, Wastasino. Uh, Firuja, Dudar, Timiev, or Giri? That's an interesting uh, last name on that list. Giri is not in that group, not just because he can't calculate, but also age-wise. Yeah, exactly. He's older and he's been around for like five, six, seven, eight more years than any of these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I was surprised. I also think he is... I mean, he can definitely play. Uh, he can definitely play sharp, uh, sharp chess, and he's good at it. But I think uh, what he mo is more known for is uh, very sound positional sense, and obviously one of the best theoretical preparations. 
all round theoret theoretical knowledge uh, going around these days. Of the other three, it's a I think it's between uh, Ferugia and Duda, and I wouldn't know how to choose. Probably Ferugia, but I think, once again, we don't know enough. I think he's burst onto the scene too recently for us to, to have a like a proper gauge of just how good he is. He has uh, more hype, but Duda is also a very filthy tactician who's mm -hmm. been around a little longer. It's hard to say. Yeah, and on the topic of the game, uh, Artemiev is now significantly better, maybe even close to winning if this were, if this were a classical game. Because I think the pawn on c4 can just be taken, for instance, with a knight. Yeah, as I just said, Duda is a horrible tactician and he's just blundered a pawn here, which is why Firuja is much superior. Um, what happened here? Knight a7. Uh, yeah, that's that's not a good sign. Although it, King B A probably just wins on the spot, right? Also, Queen, could, could, uh, Queen, Queen A seven B three. Queen yeah, B6, there maybe you have a shot, but A1. I think I think this is just this is just GG. Just take on A seven B three is still not a threat. GG Hadid, peace up. Yeah. Well, this will be this will be a wrap. I mean, Queen E five probably is the cleanest one. Yeah, just Queen E five and probably written, yeah. They're not really into into resigning as much as I am, but <laughs> but uh, I don't I don't think uh, there is much intrigue left in this game, frankly. Can you go knight b two just to be fancy? Yes, you can. You can also take take rook c eight. You can as long as you don't blunder the piece back. I don't think it matters much what you do here. Yeah, I think knight b two is probably just the cleanest one. Yeah, because the uh, f four. <laughs> as you said, yeah. as long as we don't blunder the piece back. Yeah, this is why I didn't even want to calculate. Like I, I thought, why, why bother? I mean, we're still winning. Even if we just go queen takes f4, we're still winning. But why, why give your opponent this this additional source of hope? Yeah. Takes takes rook c8 maybe is the cleanest way to go about things. But once again, yeah, why, why have we even done this? You know, from a piece up position, I think it should be possible just to actually never have to calculate another variation. And Husari is down to 3.9 seconds. They do get two seconds extra per move. So, still has some time, but... Why has he played queen c5 check? That's very confusing to me. He could have just taken on b2. I mean, rook d7 now. It's just... Bishop takes b7 and then queen g8, queen a5. But there's bishop c8. No, that, that doesn't work. Yeah, so just rook d7, and then we finally resign, probably. He's just fishing. Yeah, okay, this is... Oh. Knight c4 also wins now. Just, yeah, that's uh, the most conservative of all the options for black that were instantly winning in that position, but yeah. Come on, guys. 1-1. One, one. We got stuff to do. Absolutely. There's still some food in my fridge. Mm. I just ordered new groceries. Can you order groceries in St. Petersburg? Yeah, yeah, we haven't been doing that much because, uh, uh, you know, it does give us the, the option of our little one walk per day, which is still kind of, maybe one walk per two days would be closer to what it actually is, but. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> finally happened. It finally happened. Speaking of it finally happened, are you going slightly mad or are you coping okay with isolation? I'm... I've been kind of in hibernation mode. I find it very, very difficult to, to, to force myself to do any productive work. But I'm not as, as completely insane as I expected to be. Apart from, you know, really worrying that I should be doing something chess related and still not doing it. But that's not Corona related or is it? No, 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 that's, uh, I don't know. It's just that uh, with the kids constantly around the house, there is, there would actually, if they still had to go to school, there would be sort of large periods of time when it's quiet and you can actually more reliably lock yourself in the study and pretend to work. I hear you. Can't you 
Can you like just make them go outside for a couple hours? Uh, they would love that, but we've been kind of telling them not to uh, as responsible parents, so. And what's going on here? Some random opening, ED, Queen D5? Yeah, that was... Or probably ED, probably a double ED is fine. Queen, I think knight D5, C4, knight F6 is actually also fine, as long as you go back to F6. Ninety four bishop is seven, you don't <clears throat> um uh, you, you I think we're you were okay with black here. I as is I think well well publicized on, on all the shows that we've done over the years. I played a great deal of Cole in my in my younger years and I, I recognize these structures. They kind of look vaguely attractive until you start playing them and then they will no longer really do. Uh, I mean, this is more more Meran actually than than any kind of a Cole, but yeah, it's nothing special for White unless you have some, which you don't. Some Knight G5, Knight E5 attacks here. If you have to go Queen C2, Queen E2, I don't think we have anything. Even yeah, <coughs> Queen C2 just Knight, knight D7. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to calculate there. It's just make a make a normal developing move. Queen Knight B7, Queen C7, Black is just fine. Mm -hmm. I guess you can also if you want to take twice on e4, but why would you just? Yeah, I, I don't see I don't see any need for it. Move the horse. Oli says, don't neglect your Hearthstone skills. Trust me, that's the one part of of, of any day I look forward to the most, Oli. Uh, I don't know if you can describe them as skills. Whoa. Those are your eight quiet hours of <coughs> exactly, me time. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. That, that is six. that is quite something. Yeah, you just. This is clearly not a blunder. He he actually evaluated this as being good for him, uh, for himself, and and is just going for it. Kids these days. Yeah, knight before is actually a very annoying threat here. Bishop e4. Bishop before we take on g4 with the knight, and then we take I guess on e4 and on g4 force a very pleasant endgame. Yeah. That's actually extremely well calculated by Jan Shishtof. Not that we should be surprised. He is a good player, but. To, to, for a move like knight 6 to even occur to you, uh, you do have to have a very sharp and, uh, uh, you know, uncluttered mind, because autopiloting knight bg7 there is just so easy. Do you think it sometimes helps that you're not so absorbed with having seen these types of position a hundred times, so you go knight bg7 on autopilot? Like... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think it's somehow. possible. Yeah. yeah, I think it is It is possible that, you know, to me it just feels like, uh, yeah, just go on IBD7, I, uh, I know this is fine, why why even think about other options? What do you take? Yeah, I was I was about to ask you, do you think C takes D4 is a good shout here or not? Mm -hmm. Too late. Because I, it, I would have gone Bishop D4 as well on Instinct, but I'm not sure. Because now we're slightly better with zero risk. CD, I'm a little less certain who's better and why. Some F4 and the pawn could be good or better. No? <laughs> Speaking of F4, what do you do with white? Like King F1? To... <laughs> yeah, you play rook BG1, King F1, and you you suffer. But I don't think how much you actually suffer. It's very difficult to, like, this bishop on d4 is going to be extremely annoying for a very long time, but what's the plan exactly? King f1, king e2, put something on g1, play f3, h3. Yeah, um, push the pawns, but I guess if I go g5, you got g4, and it's going to be hard to make progress here. From yeah. g5, king g6, double rooks, go f5 one day. Like, yeah, no, no, it's it's big. not pleasant, and actually having, having stared at this position for a while, I am also very firmly in the bishop takes d4 good camp. Absolutely no need to take with the C pawn and give White, you know, something to look forward to on the queen side. So he goes G5. And yeah, I'm curious if you go G4. Yeah, he does go G4. Yeah, I'm surprised he he gave White this option this early. Uh, now Rook BG1 and King G2 H3, and it does seem like it will be a lot harder to make any kind of progress. He didn't need to commit to the structures so uh, instantly. It felt to me. Yeah. What do we know about Duda? I don't know very much. He lives in Gdansk. 
His Vice Blitz World Champion 2018, was it? Or 19? I'm 18, 18, 18, yeah. Yeah, cause 18. yeah. I think he's done okay last year, but not as well as he has. As, uh, last year, apart from the people who actually won the thing, it was the Hiroji year. He's done very well in both, if we're talking about the kids today. Yep. Ah, he's not he's not in Gdansk, he's in Krakow. Sorry, you're right, you're right. I think he's from Krakow. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Vielichka, I'm being corrected all over the place. Apologies, apologies. <clears throat> As I said, I don't know very much about Mr. Jan Shishtov. Hmm. <clears throat> And he's still suffering. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was uh, a very Artemis, smart. I should say. Yeah, it, it was a very smart decision by Duda uh, to you know recognize that it's time and just take on e three. And also maybe this actually is an argument for Artemis King G two uh, having been. Because I think now he's he might be losing. Yeah? Looks like no. Yeah. So Black about to win a third game in a row. E2 might just be winning a rook here. No, rook d5 exists. I'm being informed that Vjelicka is a small town next to Krakow, where Duda was born. Yeah, and there is a question of whether he is German. I did not think he was German, but... Hmm. I haven't heard that. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry about that. Couldn't, couldn't find the mute button in time. No worries. <sighs> Yeah, now rook takes f2, obviously. And, ah, there's rook e7, rook a7 there. Uh, yeah, I guess this is the cleanest way. Just just give up on e3 and start pushing those two. Uh, What's Corona happening? You got, uh, you got hay fever or what was it? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, uh, I think it's my it's my time of the year to start to start violently sneezing every five seconds. Can we hay fever shame you? Because it means you might have been outside. I have been outside. But I wear a mask. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure there's much shaming I can I can find there. Also, ever since the bad Chinese restaurant uh, music incident, I've decided <laughs> to tread more carefully. Um, it's all good. Hang on a second. Who was there? Was uh, Jan Shishtov playing black there, right? Jan Shishtov got another point. So it's two one. Uh, it's two one in his favor, right? Eh? Yep. Okay, and uh, curious to see because I I have just seen this discussion on Facebook somewhere. Yeah, me too. Uh, Not F three. Um, and yeah. Well, you were there in the studio. I, I, I have not actually watched those videos, but I think you were there when Dorfman was saying those things, right? No, he made it sound, which makes sense to me strategically, that knight f3 is sort of the winning move here, as you don't block your c-pawn. But, of course, me being the contrarian I am, I did check with the computer afterwards, and the computer is not that convinced. After bishop g4, bishop e2, knight c6, that black does not have enough counterplay. So I think it was a very interesting strategic point that Dorfman made, but move by move, I'm still team knight c3 here, you know, check the queen. Yeah, some medical advice for me in chat. That's always incredibly welcome. Um, but only if people are real doctors. If not, please state, I am not a doctor, but if I were you, I would take I don't know, random medication, hydroxychloroquine or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure I like the uh, the bishop on b6. I don't know why it got uh, transferred over there, because it now will get hit by b4, a4. Are you getting checkmated? This looks horrible. Yeah, I, I think, first of all, there was no call castling queen side at all. And secondly, having castle queen side, yeah, I, I, I don't know why we spent two temp uh, getting the bishop over to where it will get instantly stomped by... I, I guess it, he was creating a threat of knight takes g3, but like uh, y you do not expect that to be blundered, right? 
Nah, I think people at this level often keep their G3 pawns. Yeah, now you play h4, e5, bishop d4, and uh, eventually you sacrifice a pp somehow and you hope it works for you. Because I think if you if you don't start sacrificing here, you just get completely run over. h4, don't I just go g4, and then you want knight g3 is your... Yeah, take? yeah. Yeah, that is that is my, my one actual... Even then, a5 or any move. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not saying this is great, but h4, g4, knight g3, I think, is maybe the best black can hope for here. Yeah, well played, uh, well played, Dodger. That's exactly right. Hmm. He's saying 5G is giving everyone hay fever. But mm -hmm. none of you, if you like, get rid of this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, not. Nah. Nah. Not in the mood for your nonsense, Dodgy. This is a serious issue. Yes. And somewhat surprisingly, it gets amplified by people who should know better. Like Dodgy. Exactly. That's exactly who I meant, and not Mr. Eamon Holmes, who obviously doesn't know better and can never be expected to know better. Also, when, when am I getting 5G? I don't know. So, now you want HG? Yeah. Or not G3, but I think HG is probably messier. <laughs> Even Queen takes D4. I, I really was expecting to take him, uh, expecting him to take with the knight, but maybe he was. Uh, whoa. Just complete disrespect for whatever it is that black has going on the king's side. Rook takes h3. A b king b8, let's go. Mm -hmm. Jan Shishchev is not afraid. Let's... Probably correctly so, but still, it's a, it's a cool move to... Uh, to uh, Bishop b2 probably is what he should start, start playing here. Just trying to get the queens off and... Uh, Um, hang on. Yeah, because I don't think you can. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you can. You can tolerate this this queen on d4 for very long. Although black probably still does not have any direct threats as such, and you can maybe make a move like this. Yeah, just bishop g2. Say I don't believe you. I don't believe you have anything at all, sir. Knight takes b4. That's an indication that nothing much is happening on the king side. Although, if you if you give Black enough pawns, he will start thinking that maybe even endgame is not entirely hopeless. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Feel that comfortable if there was no direct way through here. Yeah, queen yeah. Three or... <laughs> maybe queen a4, queen c6, but the problem is that doesn't actually generate a mating threat. That generates a check. Also, we go knight takes c6. Well, I'm, I was expecting knight takes d3 in reply, but ah, yes. Ah, go. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think we take with the rook, and after queen d3. Yeah, I'm not very good at guessing, but yeah, I think it. I think it does make sense to take with the knight because queen f3 now is a good good follow up, and uh, even bishop g7, rook b4 is probably kind of winning. Bishop c1, yeah, there's many good moves here. It's one of the problems with guys like Duda. It's also very hard to guess their moves. Not only do they calculate incredibly well, but you can't just guess their moves with uh, old man's pattern recognition like usually people play this here. Which mm -hmm. makes it so much harder to play them. I did I did guess bishop b5 though, because that is just completely crushing. And now after queen h4, you can play queen f3. I know rookie 4 wins the piece, so. Is that 3 1? Is that 3 1 in favor of Duda here? The dude is coming for you. Mm. Yeah. 
did you watch that movie what's it called i think it's maybe called yesterday where everybody but one dude forgot the beatles ever existed i know of the existence of that movie but i haven't actually watched it no not really worth watching but at some point he decides to change the lyrics of hey jude that he is the only one who knows him so he keeps releasing these new hit songs in his own name he changes this to hey dude um it doesn't work non sequitur well, yeah. the dude wins again he does yeah so you know we have some potential for him to just run away with it if if he goes three up it will it will i think become very very difficult for uh for vlad to come back yeah and this is what you normally would get in this position um with the bishop steel on c1 compared to the, what they had in game one i believe of this match if he goes like rookie eight here d3 asking black would you like to take on c3 sir i'd be probably politely declining like h6 well, I mean, there's there's obviously theory here connected with uh, uh, yeah h six is I think the main move. And now I think I played knight a four in this position against Hikaru. Question mark question mark. But now I think we take. Yeah, that was mainly my point that you want to wait for a three, and if not, yeah, knight a four is a, is a curious move there, creating a, a very quirky threat of a three bishop c five knight takes c five using the the slight uh, the slight discoordination of the of the black pieces yeah now now we get a reasonably well known theoretical position uh, but black i think is a couple of tempi up well at least when we played a3 and black played yeah. d6 which probably is not bad for black <laughs> yeah a3 is i would argue a counterproductive mode but you probably only lose one tempo because you probably play a4 in both cases so but yeah it doesn't belong on a3 here Bishop d7, knight c2, like smart move stuff. Can I go knight e5? Probably not. Yeah, I, I would like to go knight e5, but I guess white goes knight e3 anyway. It doesn't really change very much. Queen c8, king h2. Yeah, shocking that it hasn't been played yet. Knight e5. Yeah, we, we go knight e3 and then we try playing f4, I guess. And maybe ed bishop c6, or maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, then then I think White probably needs to play knight d5 to have any hopes. Yeah. No, but then takes takes bishop. No, bishop b5 c4. Yeah, I think this is we can play bishop c6 here, kind of prompting g4 and going to g6. But mm. yeah, I think if we don't play knight d5 here, we are slightly worse. So. Mm. <laughs> What do you think, Vlad? F4? Maybe he doesn't like bishop takes d5, cd5, queen f5 is the reason he hasn't played it yet. But, yeah, I mean, if the bishops come off, yeah, you have to play something like a 4 take with the king, that goes to d7, you play... No, but then black's play is just so comfortable, you want to play something like a6, hinting at b5, white goes a4, you put the knight on c5, and... It's just annoying because you're supposed to attack on the king side, but with the e file open and the pawn on d3 constantly giving you trouble, you're just not going to be giving very many mates in a position like this. Yeah, and he goes he goes for it instantly. G4, knight c5, g5. But yeah, young Krzysztof not even allowing it for now, at least. What are we talking about? Danger more. Number five is saying I think Duda is doubt in Spanish. That's correct, but Jan doesn't trust us to understand multilingual puns. Also correct, ever since I got, what, five likes for my fantastic pandemic tweet, I've given up on the multilingual wordplay. Mm -hmm. With a heavy heart. Yeah. I can picture the heaviness of your heart. Yeah. It is it is very heavy. Getting Ascension heavy twenty the minute. Ascension twenty, that type of heart. Extremely large and very, very heavy. 
No, that's a different body part. <clears throat> Queen e6 plate, bishop d2, or what do you do? Might be 3 is also there. Rook a2, maybe for now. Oh, Just... fancy. <clears throat> but b5. No, bishop e3, he plays like a normal person. Knight d3. Oh, that... Yeah, I mean, normal person, but also giving up a central pawn. I guess he wants bishop d4. Queen e2. But... But I would, yeah, I, I don't quite understand this. I don't think this was... Yeah, we'll see, because I don't think it's a blunder. I think no, it's a... Maybe knight g7, kind of... he wants... Knight <clears throat> 7 queen e3, sadly. Otherwise, yeah, knight g7 uh, would have been interesting, but... Knight e8, yeah, it doesn't continue here. Rook e8. Uh -huh. No, it goes bishop d4. But even queen, queen takes c4 takes here, takes here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're happy with white, but yeah, queen e2 in particular. Yeah, queen e2, he wants to take in king of 3 and... He's saying it continues. Queen c4 plate. Mm -hmm. Jan Shishtov. Yannick is saying, why are we seeing all these game all the games from Vlad's side? Is because we have a strong Vlad bias on this program. And also because I'm choosing in order to view the games to follow one of the players and therefore I think it it doesn't change. I hope that's okay for you. Yeah, this is actually now a mess. I think that was a very nice calculated uh, calculated gamble by uh, by our team. It's maybe even not a gamble, frankly. Knight e1 is a move you could consider here because otherwise, like if you... Like white is making a lot of progress, but knight e1 is very, very crucial here. I can't figure out for now how it ends. I suspect you have to take on one because a line rook g2 check might be a problem. Yeah, and uh, do the spot set. I think you're supposed to sacrifice this exchange and play queen takes b7 because the king does have a very safe haven on h4. So just take, take twice, go queen takes b7, create mating threats on the back rank. I suspect black has to play rook e8. We can take on h6 and return to f5. Something like that. I'm still confused by the side we see the game from. Don't we see everything from the white side? Like, for me, the white pieces are always on the bottom, no? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um... Why is Tazino saying, Jan, is this the broadcast format you will use for the Magazine Invitational, or will you also have an analysis board? No, we'll have an analysis Whoa, board. Well, that's there. very smart, by the way. But Knight h6 f7 actually gives us a g5 square. And also queen c, queen c8 is, yeah, I missed queen c8, but probably do they also miss queen c8. This is now queen d8, maybe? Bishop g7 wins on the spot, right? Bishop g7, game over. And I see some head shaking there by the dude. And he does resign. And I'm being informed, which is correct now that it switches, that it's always Artemiev on the bottom so the colors do switch which is correct my new reasoning will be it's so that the scores keep making sense which they wouldn't we switch the board there we go mm. this is uh, theory hmm? this is all oh. theory yeah this is and, and it's like old school theory you know kasparov games and and so on like it's just Leko once played f3 here against Grishuk, and after knight e3 he was unhappy. He wasn't He wasn't very happy for sure, yeah. There were some very, very nice games in the in the late 90s and maybe early early noughties. This is like Vichy, Kasparov, mm -hmm. and some h4, h3, and all kinds of... All kinds of Leela before it was cool stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. The famous game where, you know, there is a video of Kasparov blundering Queen takes g4 in an absolutely winning position and being understandably upset because I think winning that game would have won them would have won him the tournament. It seemed I think it's yeah, I think it was Zurich something. Ninety five ish. PCA? Yeah. Intel. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're very old. We are amazingly old. And decrepit. Well, I'm decrepit. You are. But. I don't know that word, but I <coughs> resent the notion. H4, uh, Queen A5. Looks fine for Black. Yeah, I think I think it's fine. It's also 
why is there people calling me on the like there's only one person who calls me on the on the uh, landline and it's usually that person, a parent yeah and that person knows I'm live on air right now so it's it's um, you can answer if they know maybe it's important if they call anyway I can mute the thing it's okay Yeah, GH. Yeah, we take with the rook. I'm. Oh, doesn't even doesn't even recapture. But that that pawn is that all. I'm slightly confused because that gives Black the additional option of playing H3 right now, uh, which I don't know what I think about that. H3. I guess we're supposed to just take with the G pawn. And it closes down the H file, but opens the G file, which I suspect White will be the first to occupy. H3, knight takes E6, no good. But there's Bishop C3 there in the end. I was wondering I about that endgame. Yeah, because H5 will be weak, but I, the, the the ruination of the White Queen side is such that I have I have a feeling we're not that worried about the H5 pawn. Hmm. Hmm. Whoa, that is that is not what I expected to happen. But maybe it's just good. It's pawn. I do yeah. not think of this as a legal move, which is a great pity, because it is a legal move. It is very much a legal move, for sure. B3, queen a3 would be unfortunate. Yeah, that would be, that would be a bit of a problem. Mr. Dodgy is saying, and why would Peter's cleaning lady be a lady? Thanks, Mr. Dodgy. <clears throat> Keep the chat woke. Yeah. Also keep the chat awake. Oof. How is your awakeness? I feel very sleepy today. I yesterday we, we discussed doing doing the second second semi final for a bit, and and then honestly, when it didn't happen, I was quite quite happy, frankly, because I was very very dead after yesterday's match but today i'm somehow it feels like i'm, I'm more alive and, and somewhat more awake than wow. on the previous dates did i send a message to gary for his birthday yes i did what's happening here dude are you in trouble well, yeah, yeah, I think it has to be quite a poor endgame for white. Just take on a 5 go rook. No, take on a 5 go rook, g8, white takes on h5, and we cannot take on g2. So I guess we play king d7 first, because we were always going to play king d7 anyway. So why, why, why deviate? But then rook d h1, rook g8, rook h2 happens. And maybe they, maybe actually the pawn on h5 gets, gets picked up and you still prefer black? King d7 played, knight e3. That's a bit surprising. I didn't really see what was wrong with rook dh1, and now maybe black can just go, I don't know, f6, bishop f7, and not give up that pawn altogether. But. Knight e5. Knight e5, it's, it's really time to go rook dh1, yeah. It's a... Yeah, what was that? He wants rook c8, yeah, yeah. King B2 or G2, probably G2, so that no Rook C6, B6, and I know oh, even Bishop B1. I didn't, I didn't see that option. Rook C5, go for cheapos. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's a compliment or uh, the 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 non-compliment, Doctor Apathy. I'm trying to decipher this and and see if that's if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it was a compliment. Rook c5 he played, king d1 because he couldn't take because of knight d3 mm -hmm. check. So now no, knight can... g6 and we're just Knight g6 and maybe even, maybe even h4 uh, to make it uh, harder to pick that pawn up without so giving up on c3. King on d1, my hand is starting to itch to push mm -hmm. that a pawn a little. <laughs> yeah, certainly. And he's also 40 seconds against 17, which is not nothing. 
Vlad is back. That doesn't rhyme. Back again? Uh, could be. Vlad is back, tell a friend. Uh, could I make this slurping sound again, please? What slurping sound? Or maybe it's not me, I don't know. I don't slurp. Oh, it's Grandmaster Niklas Huschenbeet asking for the slurping. Oh yeah, that, that sound. And now white goes g3, I guess. And it's kind of not entirely trivial anymore. I don't like knight g5. I mean, it's a trick. It's a it's a trap, but it's a kind of a poor trap because after e6 you have to go okay, back. Eight knight b6. <laughs> what was the trap? Yeah, or rook c8 knight b6. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but we 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 missed the window for playing g3 when the rook was still on h8, and now the h4 pawn is just alive and going to be alive forever. So, yeah, you don't you don't really save these very often, but. How's Artemio's mouse speed? He probably plays a lot of blitz. Yeah, it's probably. Fun. Yeah, I think I think it's good. I think it's. I think he should be uh, he should be fine uh, APM wise. Yeah, G four, Rook G five is now a threat. Rook H five is now a threat. Yeah, it's uh, he's doing quite well for himself. Knight E five, pick up that knight. Doesn't look great, Mister Reagan. Tear down that wall. H three probably wins. Yeah. Reasonably smooth conversion from oh, actually rook h5 was probably missed and now he but rook takes f3 That's creates a mating threat. So yeah, d3 d3 just creates too many mating threats here. Rook c2 is mated too. I think he yep. will spot that. Yeah, and his mouse speed was more than fine indeed. Mm hmm. 3 3. First to six and a half wins. Nice. And I understand you can't score six and a half wins, but the first to reach six and a half points wins the match. And they keep discussing mm -hmm. this. I don't know. It's barely a line. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he keeps on doing this because, yeah, I mean, you are asking to play this position, which. Looks like a oh. good French for White now. Bishop a6, though, like. You're, you're just in time to get these bishops off. Otherwise, I think if, if white gets c3, bishop c2 in here, mm -hmm. you just kind of get mated. But even here, you occasionally get mated. Knight f1, knight g3, knight h5. Yeah. That's what made me stop believing in the French. I was never that big a believer. But when you look at these positions and you're still in trouble after you achieved exchanging these great bishops, then mm -hmm. what can we hope for? Yeah, not if one. I like this for white. But it's uh, one thing I will say about the structure. Once the light square bishops are off, it's it's actually quite double edged, because if you if you don't manage to deliver anything on the king side, often end games are, are at least slightly worse for white. And yeah. uh, so I think uh, black is also not that unhappy if he is uh, generally okay with playing an unclear somewhat risky position with mutual chances and no there's clearly upside i was more speaking as a theoretician yeah. if you're trying to you know equalize often you realize that ugh, still suffering here even mm, without i've been trying to i've been trying to figure out if i can actually play queen a4 queen takes a7 here but i mean nobody does that it's it's too it's too insane for words uh i couldn't find how how the queen actually gets captured here but yeah i don't think this is something that people do very often this is very typical trying to play queen c2, and if white goes knight e3, he kind of blocks his own pieces in. But I was expecting b5, uh, and I'm still sort of expecting b5 so next. So now move. we can go queen e2 now, and you probably go queen b7. Okay, doesn't do that. Oh, that's smart because after takes takes. No, hang on, is it smart? Takes takes h6. No, no, queen d3, hg, looks fine, and queen c2 also looks fine. Yeah, this also, yeah, I mean, uh, not a fan. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know why he we we allowed this, even though we have come in perfectly fine after knight e3 here because we have queen b2, queen d3 wins a piece. So, uh, yeah, we just get the queens off and play this endgame. But this endgame is equalish. Maybe you even prefer black slightly after b5, knight b6. Nah. Mm. Black never better. What do you plan? Mm, yeah. Evenings, uh, Shah Pirat. I guess we b5, whatever. Rook c1, knight b6, b3, we can still keep it. Yeah. Under controls. Yeah, there's always b4, a4, and the, the knight on a6 is a bit too useless for, for us to achieve much. And I like knight h3 followed by a4, like instantly reminding black that, you know, the other side of the board is still, uh, is still not closed. Would you have played f6 there? I think maybe f6 was a half decent shot there, but maybe even here. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Maybe even here. And uh, by doing it in this order, he softened up uh, the f4 pawn, making a e f6 some passant that takes f6 less attractive. So Trying that's uh, more Duda. Yeah. Yeah, get one pair of rooks off eventually, I guess, because you don't want to see that rook landing on g7. That would be painful. This looks like the Slav a4, mm -hmm. bishop f5, e3 mm -hmm. line, where even here sometimes you suffer with black. Not sure if this is exactly about the structure. Me. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, b5 I like. Knight <clears throat> b6 or b4. Mm-hmm. There is a question, who won Svidler versus Gijarro? Svidler won. 7-4. Dominated. Teach the whippersnapper, whippersnapper a hard lesson about um, chess. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how true any of that is, but I did win. And 7-4 is the actual score. I mean, everything else is maybe slightly overstated. Did you did you spot that I had mate in two uh, at some point? Not in the moment. We were informed, and I was confused huh. why you were laughing. That's exactly why um, I was laughing. I wanted to kind of oh, yeah, convey that, that I saw it. it. All made sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I I spotted it afterwards, and I was just sitting there thinking, yeah, that was uh, that was a full point I will not see again in a hurry. <laughs> It's not really hard to spot, but you have to look for it, right? You're so lost yeah, no, I just resigned, game. basically. At that point, I was I was completely resigned to. And actually, look at this. Uh, we we just kind of started talking about other other things for a second, and white make made significant Great progress. progress. Here. Yeah, 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 I've suffered in this structure. Like I had this with black against Vaganyan, Bakro, even in the end games. I go I go f five. Ugh. Yeah. It actually the, the the missed mate in two in a completely lost position kind of tilted me for a bit, but uh, but I did manage to. I think he should have played b three. I think now he is kind of lost. He's basing this play on the on the counter play on the third, but I don't think it will be enough uh, because now f five e f five you cannot take with the knight. That's that's why he's done this. But I think it's rook h four or something. Yeah, I think this is just crushing for white now. Yeah, often they take all your pawns and they keep e five d four. Sorry, not fair. Looks bad. Artemiev is is this would this be three in a row if you were to win this one? Yeah. So he's gonna go for three up now if he wins, yeah. Exactly. This game this game was actually available on the uh, on the Russian bookmaking uh, I mean the match was available on the Russian uh, bookmaking site and they were dead even money before the start according to the people who set the line there. I wasn't sure who the favorite is. I think that I thought I thought Vlad team. was. I thought Vlad was honestly, and uh, the the start of this match was kind of proving me badly wrong. But now I'm feeling somewhat vindicated because vindicators three. Yeah, just knight takes a five. Rook h seven check is also not a bad Do you move. Go e six check. No, actually, I don't. I, th I want more. I want to give for like. I, I mean, we're always winning that piece. That piece is not going anywhere. Whoa. Okay, that probably should have been, shouldn't have been, should have been seen, right? Whoa. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, including Rook H7 check instead may have been may have been a a useful thing because now it's uh, really not not that clear because the king can go forward after Rook H7, of course. Yeah, I think he just uh, decided that the game was completely over and stopped stopped concentrating for a second, and that often costs you quite dearly in so, in, in, in matches like this. Yeah. Well, wow. well, he's two pawns down all of a sudden. No, <laughs> King of six or King G? No, he's just well. I mean, it will be a draw, but yeah, I'm just wondering draw. if he's making a draw cleanly here. Rookie yeah, it's four. not obvious. Yeah. Rook e4 is good, and uh, even after d4, I didn't see. I mean, here we can actually go rook a7, rook a8. No, we, we, we can't. There's. Uh, yeah. What? He's gonna lose. He's actually Five. trying quite. He's trying very actively to lose this game, which will be quite something considering just how winning it was and also how well he played in the first phase of it. Yeah, that would be mildly tilting, but he's still drawing, it seems like. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it would be like uh, like Nino losing this King's Indian to me that he lost, where he he just wiped wiped me off the. Board. Yeah, missing a threefold here is maybe not ideal, but uh, yeah, some head shaking. Duda really shaking his head after the threeer. Huh? Yeah, three and a half each. Yep, very very close now. This is somewhat surprising. No, it probably isn't. No, it's fine. Mm. I was wondering if you could just play d7, d5 there and not even allow d5, but I guess bishop g5 is uh, uh, awkward there. Looks like a bad version, yeah. <laughs> Why wasn't black winning in the final position, asks Catullo. Because he had two seconds and couldn't really uh, get coordinated in time. Objectively, I'm pretty sure he... Well, somewhat sure he is, but... Yeah. And he was completely lost prior to that, so he is, I would argue, not that heartbroken about not winning that game. You never know. <sighs> no, I'm pretty sure Duda is taking this seriously because. Uh, Do you see the head shake after last game? It looked very annoyed. Yeah, and also, uh, I think in particular for his generation, uh, you, you know, sort of. Uh, Proper high stakes online blitz is is something they respect and and take and take quite seriously. And uh, I still remember Grishuk telling us live on air, right, that the loss uh, against Duda in in one of those uh, speed things was his most uh, uh, his his most heartbreaking loss in his entire career. Yeah. I never know. Grishok is excellent towing that line where you think he could be serious, but you're not sure how much of it is narrative. But yeah, it was very interesting that he said that. Mm. Speaking of Grishok, no pressure, but uh, he has indicated an interest to sweat you live on air tomorrow. Mm. Mm. That would be good. I guess. I agree. What's going on in this game? I like White's position because of the space, but usually. Yeah, I think I think White generally uh, ends up being uh, pleasantly better. Uh, I don't know if it's much. Hang on, Bishop F six, Queen D four. Bishop D four, Bishop C three still saves material, right? We're kind of. Just in time there. Yeah, I'm now wondering about bishop c7, but it's probably not great. Mm, nah. Think about it, Jan Shishtov. No, but he's also quite uh, like uh, that game between because black will have to take on f6 with a knight because you don't really allow rookie a check, right? It kind of reminds me of that uh, Carlson Aronian game. These positions aren't really all that equal as long as you can't really re establish control over the e file somehow and get all the rooks off. 
And that's easier said than done often. By the way, I just said the final tomorrow hasn't been set that it's tomorrow. This Magnus thing is also tomorrow, I guess. You people will talk once we have a winner. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard from, uh, from uh, David Martinez uh, yet, but yeah, the assumption was it is tomorrow, but it might have to be moved because we obviously don't want to be, don't want to be clashing with the, uh, with the Magnus Firuja match. Well, many hours in a day though, so it yeah. should be. In, in particular, in particular these days, the day does seem to be quite interminable. Uh, is Knight B5 any good in some version? It might win the A7 pawn, right? Takes, takes, Knight B5. I think Queen G8 only move, we take on A7, we have won something. But after Knight E5 there will be counterplay. So I don't know if we are extremely happy about it or, or not. Many people are telling me that it's April 17th according to the website but the schedule you know it's it says the tournament will be played between 12th and 17th so it's not exactly committing to any of these days Ice Tassino is saying, what will we do on Thursday and Friday if the finals are tomorrow? That's tough, that's tough. I think our boy Guirinho has one of his great training matches on Thursday against Vidi this time. Didn't go mm -hmm. so well against Jordan. So How did that end? 3-1 Jordan. 3-1, because I, I saw 2-1, but I didn't I, I didn't know he lost, the, he lost the last one as well. That actually is... You know, follow follow at Jordan one for. Uh, are we not doing this bit anymore? No, he's uh, <clears throat> he's no longer our Twitter protege. <clears throat> but obviously, a very very nice result for for Jordan, regardless of uh, how. You know, serious or non-serious, the match is. I don't like Queen F6 because I have a feeling, yeah, specifically after Rook E4, you might find yourself um, a little bit uh, uh, stuck looking for good moves. And also, uh, Black is down on time quite severely. G5 is smart though. G5, I, I did not see. That's a that's a good move here. Allowing F4 was was bad. But even even this is kind of uh, extremely risky. Mr. Dodgy is begging for Twitter followers. Mr. Dodgy, can you change your Twitter handle? It doesn't suit your brand, does it? Chess problem? Yeah, I think it's too late. You think it's too late? I'm, I mean, it's a boring, serious answer, but I don't think Twitter allows changes of handle too, too easily. But you to, know, then just, again, just actually, start from scratch. All the esports people are always changing their uh, their uh, Twitter handles when they change organizations, so it might be possible. Ninety four, yeah, I was like, whoa, F five. This is really lighting up, and also uh, white is no longer ahead on the clock. Queen G seven, that takes a five. But then black just comes out of the corner and uh, is is fine, I guess. Yeah, rook f seven is a bit of a threat, though. Oh my God, says Rochcock, blunder for blunder. Yeah, these people don't know how to play chess. I don't know why you're watching them. Um, Check out Stockfish versus Lila Zero, T C E C chess. They're playing pretty well. They are good, yeah. They are good. And in a move designed to please Jan immensely, that match is currently being covered by two of, by two of my friends. So. What are you, are you friend shaming me? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I was about to actually <laughs> plug a show not on this platform and then I became very shy. There are other yeah. platforms? 
yeah, stunning as it might sound, there are other platforms. I haven't and, heard of. <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah. is white okay here? Probably is, yeah, because King of Two was actually losing the bishop on G2, so this is why he is going that direction. And yeah, there's no mate. There's definitely a perpetual if black wants it, but there's no mate. So I'm guessing this ends in a draw. Draw indeed. Hmm. Four four. You think I'm not gonna see it if you <coughs> plug it in the chat? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm very much hoping to sneak it past you this way. Yeah, the, the E3, B3, uh, Anton also did this more than once against me in the match, and it's it's kind of surprisingly annoying if you've never looked at it in your life. Really? It, I, I said it's, it's a really dumb strategy against you. Not to ask any opening questions, give you a comfortable position without any effort. <laughs> I think he was slightly better in both of those. Yeah. <clears throat> Didn't feel like. Also, you have this reversed contempt built into your evaluation, so you always give yourself <laughs> minus that zero is, fifty extra. <clears throat> that is true. That, that is uh, that is actually actually correct. Isn't this white position I like for white though. A3, mm -hmm. bishop d3, this looks like a great. 95 f4, yeah. <clears throat> bishop d7 is Where extremely is awkward. Sukatort. Sukatort, exactly. That's the thing. That's the ticket. Hmm. Boring chess saying the Leela versus Stockfish commentary was very enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it too. <clears throat> I mean, I will never get the same levels of excitement out of computer chess that Peter Heine is able to wring out of them. But I thought it was properly interesting. Such, such a uh, curious world out there. 95, C4, you're just crushing, no? Yeah, or Queen E2 even for now, we're not, uh, yeah, any of those moves. White, uh, uh, white appears to be very much in control here. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this this actually was required. The uh, uh, this is probably quite a poor hanging pawns position for uh, for Black, but at least now has something going for him. He can start. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. He can start creating some 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 actual uh, counterplay, and the immediate b5 I think is correct. Uh, allowing b takes c4 is kind of an attractive, and if you play c5, there's the d5 square for the knight. There's knight c6 challenging the knight on e5 as well. It's it's not anybody's game, yeah. The hand wants to go d5, but ed, I don't see. Oh, no, bc, I don't see a follow up. <laughs> um, rook c1 played. Now something will go to b5, probably bishop. Actually, maybe not bishop. Nah, bishop. Bishop, bishop does feel very attractive, yeah. Uh, getting these bishops off. I mean, if, if if black manages to completely stabilize here, he will be significantly better. But white probably should be in time to do something about it. Yeah, like a4 as a starting point. Uh, bishop a4, bishop a6 might still be a little bit awkward for black because of how poor... No, probably just Step, fine. Take on a4 now, you don't want to be yeah. defending that stupid a pawn the rest of the game. Yeah, exactly. Take, take, rook c1, rook c1, queen d6, you're just completely fine. Knight c6, next move, maybe you're, you you might still be slightly better even. What are we discussing? Mr. Dodgy is saying he won't get sucked into engine chess. Um, yeah. Yeah, but obviously Vlad has, com Vlad has completely different ideas here. Uh, not really into playing symmetrical positions where he is arguably maybe even slightly worse. 
I don't see what he wants after bishop e8, but or even rook takes c4, frankly. What's the plan after rook c4? Just be worse? I don't think that's the plan per se, but it's the reality. He will have to adjust. Should b3, b5, queen d5. What should do? So many options. Queen d5, queen yeah, d6. I, yeah, bishop b5. And uh, yeah, you take black. Black wins some of these. Yep. Peter, you can confirm or deny this. Your friend Lorinda, um, what are his Twitter pronouns? Yeah, he's, yeah, he, him, yeah, for sure. There you go. I'm surprised he allowed 95 here. I, no, I'm, but I guess he, no, I'm, I am surprised he's done this. I think 25 was cleaner. But he is still fine after 95, queen d5. I mean, and by fine, I mean he is still better. Very fine. There's a question for you. Can you recommend some TV shows? I got nothing. Uh, there was something enjoyable I was... Uh, hang on. There was something recent that I quite liked. Uh, devs. Yeah, devs is not bad. What? D-E-V-S? De yeah, devs. Computer Devs is, programmers, or what does it mm -hmm. refer to? Yeah. Devs is not bad at all. It very much depends on how they wrap it up, because I think it's like two or one episodes out of the... Uh, out from uh, completing the first season. And if the ending is just completely ludicrous, it will obviously, as usual, spoil the show a little bit, or maybe even more than a little bit. But the first six episodes were quite enjoyable. Oh, Mr. Dodge is calling me out on Twitter pronouns. Am I getting cancelled? I do it wrong. Um, Danger More Five is saying I liked Hitman. Recommended for Peter, not Jan. Sounds too violent for me. I'm more of a you know <laughs> connoisseur of the fine arts. So. Yeah. And Gapon says I just paid for season one of Blacklist and and I was forced to watch it. It was rubbish, but now I'm addicted and probably buying season two. I watched the first four and then I kind of gave up. And I basically like for me I'm such a and now I will not be able to remember what the guy's name is. Jesus. But the main, the, the guy playing the main character, the, the guy who I fell in love with all those years back when he was in uh, Boston Legal. Why can I not remember names anymore? You know who I'm talking about, right, Jan? I know who you're talking about. I also can't think of the name. James Spader, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, of James Spader, and uh, uh, I I was very excited to go back to you know uh, watching him, uh, and I, I will watch basically anything he does, but uh, it does get very repetitive. Um. Also, it's on Netflix, isn't it? <laughs> Shatner, no, not not yet. Uh, Shatner is also good, but I didn't mean Shatner. Uh, it's also on Boston Legal. I, yeah, he's there. Yeah, that's that's why he got mentioned. Yeah, but I, I I did not mean him. White is now better. Missed rookie seven trick. Yeah, that's uh, that's slightly unexpected. But Black probably still makes a draw, but yeah, friend this is, is not his friend. I'm not, not sure all. you make a draw here. Yeah, uh, three four. That's pretty stable. Maybe it, uh, it is a stable setup. But at some point, you start get get getting pushed mated, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these yeah, if all the pawns are gone, these are lost for black. Which mm -hmm. I was surprised to learn, but it makes some sense. Obscure bishops who just get made it. Mm. So it could very well be objectively lost. Not that that matters that much with seconds per move. Yeah, and okay, now now this, this is just for objectively example, completely. Does not help, yeah. <laughs> completely losing yeah because the a pawn just doesn't run it goes it gets to a4 and then it never makes makes a forward step uh important not to blunder any forks of course but i think uh, i think we can count on vlad not blundering any forks here i like mango juice saying i watched the first two seasons of prison break recently are the other seasons still good no season one is very good season two is okay and then somewhere halfway through season three you you decide okay i'm done with this so you can save a couple hours there 
couple of hours. Yeah, like <laughs> halfway through season three, you can you don't have to get there. You probably yeah. watched all the way till season yeah, eight. I, yeah, I'm, there, I'm, right? it's not eight. It's it's only four. But I did watch three and four, and uh, I could not explain to myself why I was watching that. You're a completist. While, while I, yeah, I'm, I am a completist, but it still did not make any sense to me at all that I was watching it. The pawn actually, I, I promised you the pawn will not get to uh, will not get to further than a four, and it's on a two now. So I, I keep Probably on. even have gone to a one. I, I keep on lying to our esteemed audience, but you promised. Uh, yeah, but he is now. Yeah, you can just take. Sadly, for, another four check. Hang on a second. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Knight of two is a nice sneaky move too. <clears throat> so yeah, not... resourceful. Yeah, I mean, it's probably still winning, but you you no longer feel very confident white actually. No, now if seven check wins on the spot, right? Uh, Missed it. Missed it. Mm, maybe now he spots it. Nope. Now, come on. Yes. Pala Sharato is saying, ah, Will Ferrell mo movies is not my type of thing. Mr. Dodgy, please ban. <laughs> and Artemiev wins, takes the lead. I have a feeling I missed a game. Did I miss a game? Is the score 5-4? It is, I think. I, I think it is 5-4. I, I was kind of trusting because I, I, at some point I opened the Twitch chat and it also gave me access to uh, to the beautiful scores on the, on the screen. Yep. Okay. He is banned. Palash Arto is saying, haha, what next? Adam Sandler fan club? Depends. Some good movies. But yeah, Adam Sandler hate I'm also not on board with. Uncut Jams, fantastic. <laughs> How could you not like Will Ferrell movies? Step Brothers, Anchorman, The Other Guys. Th and those are just three of the top five movies of all time. <laughs> exactly. And this statement definitely needs to be taken completely literally. Yeah. Take and go Queen F6. Also literally. Yeah, but this I lost. is of course better for white if you don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I lost. I lost some positions like this to uh, to Shah at some point in some blitz games, but I think he already had like a five, a four in, and with the open a file it gets a lot, a lot trickier. But with the a file still closed, I think white will be in time to to consolidate and 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 be a little bit better. Yeah, rook b2, rook g2 or something, yeah. Not even obligatory, we can just ignore it for the move, uh, for, for a move, just play queen d2 queen here. Queen d2 too. looks normal, no? Mm-hmm. Ah, he does yeah, rook b2. You strong players, with your fancy rook maneuvers. I don't know if I like it here, frankly. It kind of... Uh, after rook e8, we... Do we play knight h4 there, maybe? I don't know. It's uh, It's confusing. Lasharato, he's trying to make friends again. He's recommending Jojo Rabbit, which we saw together. Yes. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah it's uh, definitely we endorse that recommendation. That's that's a good that's a good movie. Still, we, I have not forgotten all this hate thrown Will Ferrell's way. I like Bishop E4. It feels like Black is kind of all right now. A5, A4. No, I think yeah, it's I think this well. is just fine now. Yeah. Uh, and these positions do occasionally become even nice for Black if the A file, as I as I mentioned, if the A file gets open, then you start uh, uh, harassing the the pawn on B3. Also, often if you lose a bit of control here, you lose all of the control. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. And not in the good way. Not in a good way at all, no. Cthulhu is saying, I thought Teledega Knights was a good parody. That was a parody? It's a racing movie. Or maybe satire. I yeah, couldn't a... get into a Teledega Knight, I have to admit. Sorry, Will. Mm. 
Yeah, rook of d1 is clever because he wants to go knight d4, and that move was losing a rook on the previous move, so he is now very much in damage control mode. Peter, the people want to know, have you watched Tiger King? No, I have not watched Tiger King because I... Uh, uh, what's the... Like, the official reason is that I don't actually own a, an account on whatever it is, the network that carries it. Netflix, I assume? It's Netflix, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, first of all, it's really not difficult to get an account, and secondly, it doesn't stop me from watching all the other stuff. So that kind of doesn't ring true even to myself. Uh, I might end up watching it because everybody is discussing it. And Carol F. Biskin? Bisker? Biskin? Yeah. Carol Biskin, yeah. Baskin. No, I think Baskin. Baskin, yeah. Without without the, the adjective in between, it doesn't quite work, I think. Never used in the show. It's just Carol Baskin. Okay. Whatever you say, boss. Balaj Aracho is recommending another good movie, Lady Bird, another excellent movie. Um, but still, Will Ferrell, have not forgotten. Also, in that vein, now that we're connecting Balaj Aracho, Eighth Grade is a movie you will actually enjoy. It hits your tastes and sensibilities. Is anyone better like if if anyone is it's probably black but i don't think it's significant enough right um i would think no one's better enough i might choose white actually because things stabilize could dream of pushing these pawns but yeah it's gonna stay a dream i mean the only quote unquote weakness on the board is on b3 so which is why I'm kind of surprised he is allowing B4 here. Mm -hmm. I was expecting C5 to be played more or less instantaneously. Oh, danger more. You don't respect me? I've always respected you. I was hoping it would be mutual. That's a tough pill to swallow. Is it because of the Will Ferrell stand that I took? No, I'm not throwing you under the bus to gain some respect, Will. It's not happening. Um, yeah. Still equal. Still, still equal, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who, who benefits from a practical viewpoint from this change of structure. Probably nobody, if we're if we're entirely serious. But I guess why? Precisely because the, now that. Now that the rook lift has happened, there is this rook at four, h four, and uh, you know, pretense on the king side plan available to white. But it's mainly pretense, of course. It's uh, it's not something substantial. And danger more five is saying, Jan, if you said mouse instead of more five, things would change. Okay, I don't know. I'm a, I'm German. I read what's on my screen. Had you wanted to be called Danger Mouse, you would have spelled it with an S. Um. Hmm. I still like white here. Yeah, Some if, G4 uh, yeah, day. exactly. If, if G4 happens in a, in, in a good version for white, it might it might become mildly interesting. But G4, black always goes rook f8 and takes on a five with the rook and gets all the material off. I don't think anybody goes fg ever. Exactly, yeah. Danger more five is saying in the comic, more five not so popular in Germany. So you're persisting with the more five routine, eh? So routine is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to argue, it is what it says. Balasarato is now claiming he hates all kinds of comedy and humor. Laughter. Yeah. Happiness. Yeah. I don't blame you. I understand. What are you moving back and forth, Jan Shishtov? You need to win. Does he actually need to win? Kind of. It's 5 4, first to 6.5 wins. 
Balash is saying he doesn't hate comedy, he just doesn't watch it. Whatever. Sorry, hate was too strong a word. I apologize. I'm surprised he didn't play h5 on the previous move, but yeah, now queen c8 is we can pick up the c6 pawn. The we king is win? so open now, you don't win queen e4. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. We actually, yeah, queen c2 will always be there. Yeah, it's just it's just a perpetual check. F3 though, F3 now. It's weird that he now it's just whoa, why no, do you not play F3 there? That's, yeah, that's very, very strange because honestly. There is not even an immediate draw after three. It's a genuine winning attempt. We obviously we obviously don't have don't have time to uh, to uh, go back and cover it. But there's no no perpetual, and the queen comes out from c six. So that counts as a miss. D takes c four. No drama, baby. We are uh, here. D takes c four is a good move. Not, D takes four is a good move, but once again, maybe maybe not in this match situation. Though maybe maybe he is doing it exactly right, considering the fact that he's behind. I think it's just you know making moves. Well, yeah, you're right. There's more tension in this, I would guess. Even though with this pawn on d five, it's hard to create too much tension. Yeah, this is very much up uh, up Artemius Valley. So he does it. Knight a4, yeah. you go b5. Yeah, I <laughs> oh, no, should... b5 is hanging, sorry. <laughs> yeah, knight a4, you... Rook c1, he plays... This surprises me a little bit because, <laughs> yeah, it, it allows he takes d4. But I guess he takes on e4, takes on d4 with everything and claims this endgame is slightly better for white. Uh, which is probably not true, but he claims it anyway. Yeah, it's also his type of chess, no? Even if it's not so mm -hmm. <laughs> And he also has a one-point lead, so it all makes sense. And Jan Shishtov is shaking his head ever so slightly. Yeah. And Balash still soul-searching. Soul hmm, though I do like Eddie Murphy and Jamie Foxx. Both are great entertainers. Do you see the new Eddie Murphy movie? Dolomite is my name. No. I liked it. <laughs> Was not aware that existed. Uh, I don't know how this came up in the, in, in chat, but uh, that, that that actually is a decent idea uh, mentioned by by Danger Mouse in chat that analyzing the same position with colors reversed is is a good way to break prejudices. I have a personal story on that topic, uh, which, because we're covering Blitz, is probably not exactly the the correct type of contempt. But uh, you actually, it actually does influence the way you look at the position, whether you're uh, you're playing black or white. It's a topic I'm not at liberty to speak about. That would be that would be why exactly. I think not being at liberty to speak about it includes includes in, 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 the, the okay. why. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. Did not succeed in mm. in getting in getting anything at all out of you on the topic. Nah. Speaking of not getting anything at all, black is fine, no? What yeah, black is, black is fine. Well, you would like to play rook dc1, but both rook takes d4, and I suspect just takes takes and rook c8 kind of equalize. So. Yeah, takes takes rook b8 is just fine because after rook c1 we still have rook c8 as the option. So yeah, it's it's nothing. I've lost such, lost such things with white. King comes to d6. These kingside pawns start moving. I get very nervous. It's probably in time for none of this to happen, but it could happen. 
Yeah, you feel you feel slightly like if, if this endgame actually appears on the board. I'm surprised he didn't play d5, d6, but maybe that's because he doesn't like losing. Um, Could be it. Yeah, but but that yeah that position you, you will lose one out of I don't know how Still many. Still drawn, of course, but yeah. Yeah, not very many, frankly. Yeah, just keep keep the pawns on h4 and g3. H4, and g3, and g3 looks very safe. Yeah. Here. <laughs> I wonder if Jan Shishtov watches a lot of TV. I have a feeling he could be into some weird, like, manga, anime stuff. Yeah, that's, Based that's on not, no that's knowledge whatsoever, that's just my theory. Yeah, I've, I have recently come into possession of some do the knowledge that I was not in possession of previously. But it is not to do with his TV tastes. Yeah, I think I know the source of your knowledge, and I think I question the content when similar knowledge was brought to my attention. <laughs> I don't know. It, it sounded very convincing. Yeah. Uh, it sounded very convincing. Mm, draw. Yeah, come on. Let's start the new one. Who would you rather face in the finals, Vlad or Jan Shishtov? Uh, I would like to open door three. Zonk. I don't know, it, it, it feels like if I have a reasonably good day and whoever my opponent out of these two has a poor day, there there could be there could be an interesting game uh, match going on. But uh, I, I wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't me just staying on brand when I said that I should be starting as a very significant dog against either of these. I still recall you telling us how hopeless you were against Vidit in round number one. <laughs> Did I use the word hopeless? No. But the words significant dog were probably probably felt. That is that is possible, yeah. Hmm. That is possible. So if that game is a, is drawn, it is uh five and a half, four and a half or already six five. Six five. Six five. Yeah, so he will have to he'll have to win with the white pieces here uh, to to tie it. Which is something Vijay did very, very convincingly against me. That was a painful game. Mm -hmm. They both look so focused. Look so drawn. Yeah, I'm. I'm not entirely sure what is being what is being achieved here by by not just starting the next one. It is three plus two. I mean, uh, at no increment, this would have been a position you always play on. But at three plus two, it's just you're you're not generating threats, and you're not going to be generating threats. Okay. Did you learn language in, in Great Britain, Peter? No, I read a lot and, and generally, as you probably have noticed by me doing this commentary immediately after finishing my semi-final, I find it very, very difficult to shut up in general. And once I started traveling, this kind of required, I acquire some knowledge of English so that I could annoy more people of my conversation. Makes sense. What about the Leisure Suit Larry story? Yeah, no, that's that's the beginning of it. Uh, 
you know, old school type in uh, adventure games, or we used to call them quest games, but I think they are called adventures. If you define the genre properly, that was that was the beginning of it. But then, you know, lots of books, uh, lots of uh, TV. Whoa, that's quite a striking winning attempt, quote unquote. Who's making the winning attempt? I do not know. I think he's trying to lose. He's not going to succeed, but uh, I, I don't understand what is being achieved. Just for here. the record, if White gives up all his people and puts his king on C1, it's still a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A1, let's say, for clarity. King C2, B2. Yeah, let's, uh, let's call it quits. And we have, our, we have our draw at last, judging by that sound, right? Yep. Draw agreed. So must win. Must win for Duda and uh, another six again. There we go. That's his drawing weapon. Cthulhu wants to know what was Kramnik like when you were kids? We were sort of in the Wadwinik school together, but not for very long. And uh, I think my, f no, that was the second session. The first session was slightly more nondescript, but the second session was actually uh, going on during the uh, Moscow GMA tournament. And uh, uh, Vlad would uh, show up after he played in the tournament and he would hang with us and occasionally listen to us show uh, games to uh, to Gary, the somewhat famous picture of me showing something on the demonstration board and like five 2700 players sitting in sitting in a future 2700 players sitting and listening is from that session. But Vlad was already strong enough to to play in the main GMA tournament by that point. Give I didn't really. One. White G3, by the way, isn't that ugly to weaken all them light squaresies? I, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think he kind of assumed he'll get knight f4 in, but yeah, bishop g4 is now going to be quite annoying. You have to play something like rook d1, and then the bishop might even go to f3 and continue, continue being a pest. Queen a4, counterattack. Yeah. No, this is not this is not the uh, the money match yet, Gapon. Uh, you get paid if you get to the finals, which you do if you win this match. No, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, but the, the statement continues. If you're in the same as you get five hundred quid or something, and that that part of the statement is incorrect. Well, King B8, D5 was bothering him here, so he takes on Yeah, I guess, first. yeah, but uh, if he could have played something like A6 and then D5 probably wasn't that much of a threat. And, and now previous play is somewhat justified for White because uh, you do get what is probably the ideal scenario. It just has to be better for White, no? Put the yeah, this is three, rook on E1, swap stuff. Yeah, this is pleasantly uh, pleasantly better for White. F5, F4 is uh, the one source of counterplay Black has here, so he course goes for it uh, trying to get the doubled pawn off the board maybe there's an argument for playing something like bishop c1 here to have g4 as a reply to it bishop g5 might be not a stupid move either yeah uh, just push the rook somewhere play rook hg1 and now we can play bishop c1 and we have improved uh, we have improved the previous line by a tempo Dude wants more. No, he goes bishop c1. I think it is more. I think it is exactly how, how you get more here. And at some point, as has been already mentioned in, in chat more than once, uh, c3, c4 will become a very serious topic. You, you do need to have a good reply to c5, though, because uh, you do not want to create uh, a protected pass around d5 for yourself here, because that would give a tremendously nice d6 square for that knight on b6, which is currently completely stupid. So... 
if you do play C4, you probably are taking on C5 when Black takes it or plays C5. And I like the idea of doubling on the G file in preparation for for that eventual potential opening of the of the G file here. Does he have a good reply to C5 now? He probably goes Bishop F4 and then D C yeah, and that wins. Yeah, that wins. Oh yeah. C5, Bishop F4, Bishop D6, D C, Bishop F4, C B. The mm -hmm. Queen is under attack. Yeah, so we go rook hd1 for now and we continue. Yeah, this is not where you want to be when you just need to make a draw because it's just very, very difficult to even make moves here with black. White has such a free roll. Including a4, no, if, if you play a4, black can play knight g5 and then uh, c4, knight b4. Here comes so c4, yeah. c5, bishop f4, I guess. Looks pretty yeah, good. Yeah, this looks, this looks like it's... Uh, Actually, c5 bishop f4, there's queen b6, rook a3 made ideas. <laughs> yeah, it just wins. Queen b6. Uh -huh. Yeah, it just wins on the spot, which is very beautiful. And in these types of positions, c5, knight g5, queen a4 is often actually a mating attack. But maybe you don't need to do it straight away. Maybe you are not obliged to. to a4 continues looking very strong as well. Uh, just a4, a5, a6 threats are look quite awkward for black to face. Horrible. Yeah, no, this is this is not a good position. But you still need to, and he's he's keeping a very good uh, very good control over the clock as well. Young Shishtov, he's he's ahead on the clock. So, how's my German? Uh, non-existent? That's uh, not true. I heard that's you. That's not an not order. Eine große Apfelschorle. Yeah, I've been I've been doing that for years. Yeah, that's my that's the extent of my German. D five now probably wins. D5, C5, D6 should be crushing as C D5, C5 is winning and even Bishop B6, Queen B6 is probably made. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just play G5 here and and uh, the, the, the black position collapses. Feels play funny. A3, dude. Take your time. <laughs> Not a mistake. As long as you don't allow Queen B4. Uh, so, okay. and yeah, A3 is definitely not a mistake, but it does feel to me like G5 might just end the game on the spot, which is... Uh, kind of, uh, kind of nice. He did go d5. Yeah, c5 wins. Yeah, c5, knight c4, queen takes c4 is a very nice way to just wrap things up on the spot. Also very Duda esque. Mhm. Mm yeah, there we go. So you have to play knight c8, but then your position is just completely lost because you don't even have a pawn. Yeah, now queen c4, queen c4, and we go to the tie breaks. The tie breaks is just whoever wins a game wins. Yep. Whoever wins the next game, I should say. Yeah, no, this is just made here. Yeah, you, you can't even continue. You would like maybe to continue for a bit, but bishop b7, bishop f4 is made in three, so. Well, not made. Uh, there's rookie five there. Challenge yeah. accepted. <laughs> yeah. Bishop f4 probably is the cleanest solution here. He's thinking. Well, yeah. As long as he doesn't lose on time, he's not gonna he's not gonna do much wrong. Rook B seven, yeah. Rook E four, Rook D seven. Yeah, no. I mean, it's C six is not even a threat. Takes takes Bishop F four or the immediate Bishop F four. Yeah, no, you're you're in some trouble here, Splick. Mm. Uh, yeah. Bishop F four is nasty. Takes just just GF. Yeah. Okay, rook eight, rook eight, seven. Not bad. Yeah. yeah, this is not bad either. Yeah, GF wasn't wasn't a mistake, but mating into his checks is never really, never really a bad idea. Six six, overtime, baby. And uh, overtime with Artemiev starting with white, right? So. Yep, and he's doing Artemiev things. Knight three, G three, B three, Bishop B two. And uh, thanks for the beat, Lu beats, Luigi, and uh, we appreciate the support. And whichever video series you mean, we've enjoyed making it. This line used to be kind of mildly popular at some point. There were all the Tramnik still games. Still is, right? no, like you get a tiny plus equal and black has to make a series of precise moves. Is this how they do it though? Yeah, knight f4, what's the line here? It's, um... 
GF. I guess you have to go GF, uh, but uh, something's something's off. Maybe not. Maybe this is how they yeah. do it. And instead of bishop f6, they start playing bishop d7 more often. Well, yeah, it's a line. Mm -hmm. Catalan pressure. The bishop on c8 yeah. struggles a bit. Shouldn't be shouldn't be a lot, uh, considering how close black already is to coming coming out of the corner and yeah. The expectation has to be that this is very near complete equality, but maybe not complete equality just yet. Something like ninety five maybe, and just you know try to make the b seven b six move as difficult to make as possible. Yeah. And there that's what he does. Yeah, there comes the knight. Because the knight belongs on e5. Huh? And I'm not going to sing it. All right. Much as I would like to, <laughs> I'm not going to such so, so, uh, what's the word? Now you've planted the thought into people's heads. Yeah, it will be very, very difficult for people to shake off that nightmare of me singing Patti Smith really, really poorly. Mm, D8, do you take? I guess you take. Yeah, I think we take, we go rook d1, and we we continue, kind of. Yeah, it's rook d1, where does the bishop go? I was wondering, c7, rook c1, but then I go somewhere else, I didn't really see any. Big issue, bishop b6, and bring the king. Yeah, just king of fate now, no hurry. At some point, we... we we will uh, start even maybe seriously considering taking only five, going king e7, bishop d7, and so on. And rook g1, yeah, we still have to move the bishop somewhere because king e8 or king e7 would run into knight takes f7, and that position would suddenly become unplayable, but. Tehenka is pointing out Patty Smith does have the same initials as Peter. Coincidence? I think not. Well Couldn't played, agree sir. More. Well played, sir. But actually, the version of that song that I uh, first learned wasn't wasn't Patty Smith. It was what was that band? Ten thousand something. I don't know. Uh, it's Googleable. Ten thousand ten maniacs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that version. Maniacs. What now? That's Ninety-seven a, check. Yeah, we just play king e eight, and we offer you the b seven pawn for the trade of rooks. <clears throat> but rook c one is a clever move because because now after bishop g eight, we have a bishop takes b seven. Hmm. Finally, it feels, it, yeah, it feels like this has been misplayed, maybe by black. Maybe instead of bishop f6, bishop b6 was more precise. Specifically to avoid this. Yeah, and he is now forced into world. This is not going to be fun. <coughs> rook on c7 is not so easy to get rid of. No? You need king e8, b6, bishop d7. It's a lot of ifs. Okay, hmm. 7 I like. King e8, still bishop c6. How do you get out? Hmm. Artemiev. With a shot of ending the match right here, right now. And moving on to meet the end boss, Mr. Swidler. B5 shows how desperate the black position is, giving up a pawn just to develop the bishop a little. 
but it does feel hopeless at this point. No, it, yeah, it feels incredibly bad. Seven. <clears throat> yeah, even B4 and play it slow. Yeah. B4 okay. and Rook A8, I suspect, wins in the long run. Yeah, this this went wrong. Dudas looked a little tilted for a while already. He's still hung in there in the match. But this well, more might than be hung it. in there, he actually he actually won game twelve on demand, which exactly. is which is a very very uh, difficult thing to do. But yeah, he seems to be getting uh, getting worked in this one. Mm. Not his type of chess. This, S even though yeah. He was probably one or two precise moves away from just the draw, so always easy to say. Yeah. And even this, if you if you allow Black to play B five before the technical task might become might become a little bit tricky. So you have to take some decisions here with White. Before yeah, I like, I like uh, this. Yeah. Time to play Russians and your chess culture. Sorry for stereotyping. Horrible racial profiling right there. Shameful. Uh, yeah, and just a three, and uh, the bishop on e eight is still very, very poor. Maybe even start with no h four would be a blunder of a pawn, so you don't play h four. He's let himself down to ten seconds, though. Black goes g five now. Six is very deep. Yeah, I'm surprised by no g five on the previous move. Maybe he doesn't. He doesn't like allowing bishop h five or something. But I think we, we we need to start moving something on the king's side. Or well, maybe he just wants to wants to keep it together for now. And, uh, just kind of pass the baton to to Artemiev and says, "This is a sturdy setup. Please show me how you intend to break it down. And I'm not creating any weaknesses on the king's side for you to exploit." Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's uh, it's easier for Black to just pass because like, if you if you play g5 and something backfires, that pawn might just fall, and then the conversion will be uh, trivial. But as long as you just keep this keep this shape and do nothing, it does feel like Artemiev might be uh, at some point forced to to go into the five versus four, yeah. which is. Easy. Yeah, and uh, even that, as you as you see from the way young Krzysztof is doing, it is not it's not so easy to get. I guess Bishop B seven A six always forces it, but yeah, does it? Kinda Three. does. Wow, threefold repetition. That was not Artemio's intention. We see him shaking his head there. A good chance gone by. And yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, that's a throw. Feels. That's a bit of a throw. And you and... lust for life. Mm -hmm. That means now Yashish of Duda with the white pieces can end the match with a victory. So can Artemiev. What's harder to win with black? Yeah, Young Christoph, Young Christoph actually played this against me in St. Petersburg in the last round of the Rapid, I think. And I lost that game quite quite badly and did not cash. Sorry. Bubbled that tournament. Is D4... What's the line they normally play? Don't they throw in some knight E4 somewhere? I always forget. Yeah. yeah, this is what I played against. This is what I played against, dude. I played knight E4, queen D3, E D4, knight D4, queen B4, check. And he did not play king E2 even for some reason. He played bishop D2. And... Uh, uh, I declined that endgame, played with Queen's on, still was okay, and eventually lost because he outplayed me. The other main move was a3 here, yeah? That's mm -hmm. a3, b3, they tried everything in that position, yeah. a3 is the old move, b3 is something that they've been uh, doing more recently. And this position I actually know. Whoa. This position I actually know, and the thing about this position is, if you don't know what you're doing with white, you lose. Uh, White actually holds this, but you you better know how. <laughs> this is kind of remarkable that so he queen just stumped. Queen four, rook g four, yeah. Queen f five. Yeah. Queen e five. Queen e five, and and these these uh, complications end up as they often do, being zero zero zero. But if you have no clue, you probably just go down in flames. And Enjoy. it's it's really remarkable that uh, young Krzysztof appears not to know that because oh, he's clearly he, calculating. Doesn't look happy. 
you know, even like if even I know this, it's really supposed to be common knowledge. I played this line. I played this line with White against uh, Navarra in, I think, one of the Grand Prix, and I got a very, no, no, in Beale, in Beale, I think, and I got a very pleasant advantage out of the opening. And then I got back home, and there was a message waiting for me from a friend saying, you are aware after G5 you're fighting for a draw there. And I said, of course not. Why would I be aware of anything? <laughs> but I am now. So yeah, it's also surprising that uh, Artemiev is thinking, frankly. He blitzed because... out G5, but now he's in deep thought. Maybe he just, yeah. He knew yeah. exactly that. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's exactly Rook B4, B4, is what the hand wants, no? The hand yeah. wants what the but hand wants. But after Rook B1, Bishop F5 actually runs into Bishop D2 and... Uh, so sorry, Bishop B2. And, I mean, it's a sharp position, but... And I, I don't even remember exactly how you're supposed to play it. I remember the evaluations, and I remember that the general character of the game is that White is never really pushing for any kind of an advantage at all. White is always the side uh, hanging on grimly and hoping, hoping not to get... Not to get overrun. Hmm. So let's go, Bishop f5, Bishop b2, d4. Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, just play d4 there and, uh, and Bishop b4 and maybe castles long at some point. It's just very difficult for white to uh, to make moves. But yeah, I have, it, I have it all written down somehow, but uh, don't remember anything. d4 played. Queen B7 is asking for it a little, yeah. Queen B7, Bishop E4 is... Bishop, yeah, Bishop E4 appears to, be, appears to be quite strong. Also, Rook, no, Rook B8, Queen C6, check is maybe okay. Bishop before we do have Queen B5, but just mm -hmm. generally sidetracking that Queen for one pawn doesn't really feel like it's something we should be very interested in. Whoa, okay. Here we go. Okay. But now he has bishop takes d4 after king of eight. Hang on a second. Maybe maybe bishop b4 was a mistake. Maybe he's just winning now after bishop takes d4. d4 missed by both. And bishop, oh, whoa. Oof. That, that was just kind of winning the game there on the spot, right? Because we take on c5 with check next move. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it seems like Artemiev could not remember and then also miscalculated, but did not get punished just now. But I'm sure he, they both realized that the tactic exists, which is why, for instance, Bishop takes G2 hasn't been played yet, because Artemiev now realizes that, you know, he probably won't get forgiven the second time. Unlikely. Dude also low on time, so he had to make some quick decisions. This is a lot of drama. Yeah. Whoever yeah. wins, wins the thingy or the semi-final. Exactly, yeah. Thank you. Finally, finally. Confirming everything I've been saying for the past two hours. Mm -hmm. Artemiev, taking his time. What do you do? Rookie 8? Rook e8 is one move, maybe some, yeah, I actually quite like rook e8, so it's, uh, it's the most, uh, uh, the most harm harmonious consolidating move you have here. I was considering queen f5, but I think the issue with both of those moves is bishop a3. Rook e8 played. If not for bishop a3, I think, I, I think black is still doing quite well, but yeah, now he spots... Now he spots the idea of attacking the center, so... Uh, you might actually have to play rook c8, as, as upsetting as that is, because I don't think we can allow queen takes c5. I don't want to. Um, neither does Vlad. And you have to say that this type of yeah. absolutely messy... Um, messy... Uh, uh, sharp tactical fight is probably more suitable for for well easy for even I was wow that's actually very so scary so much greed yeah King I would D2? not have done that yeah Pro probably 
Bishop, bishop takes the i and bishop goes back to e3. This is clever. This allows at least some stability. This is very clever, just returning this. And yeah, takes, takes, and we need to connect our pieces a little bit more, but um, something like group so, Queen B7 seven. is probably a clever move because it forces black to shift from this yeah rook g4 maybe whoa yeah that's that's very nicely played by by duda getting some material off the board yeah, and he, he's one move away from completely uh, completely stabilized something like king e2 just solves all of his issues maybe not not, not after queen a3 though yeah but now now king e2 and you start and you start pushing uh pushing the black pieces away King D1 is very nice uh, in, in general, but uh, Artemiev stops the king from reaching B1, but he seems to have... Well, what is... This? White wins. White probably... The, yeah, FG now. FG now, and... Uh... So yeah, Artemiev actually, the, his, uh, his missed perpetual... Uh, well, not, not perpetual threefold in, in the previous game, actually kept, comes back to... Comes back to to bite him. What a game, though, as a <clears throat> decisive game. Total mess. Duda runs into this g5 and still finds a way. Yeah, but it's a it's a very difficult uh, it's a very difficult line to play uh, to play perfectly, and uh, it's not that surprising that uh, if you. You don't remember you probably don't ever expect to get it on the board frankly and this is why uh, when it actually does show up on your board it's very difficult to remember what the notes say because he clearly knew he played g5 so quickly that there is absolutely yeah. bishop g7 queen e6 mate into uh yeah. all that also good <clears throat> yeah so also reasonably good and jan shishev duda wins this match congratulations to the man from Krakow, who moves on to face <laughs> your humble commentator, Peter Swidler, in the finals. Um, I think it's easiest if we just end this in US, switch to the Spanish commentary if you want to hear the last bits of it, the questions to the players. So thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you, Peter, so much for not only playing, but also doing commentary. And best of luck for the finals, whenever they are. Whenever they are, yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow is the uh, the big uh, Bunter Blitz uh, uh, finals at what time? Six ish, Central European or? I should know such things. I as usually do not. It's Magnus Carlsen against Ali Reza Firuja. I believe they play at seven seven thirty ish. Yeah, it's uh, tomorrow afternoon. Be there. I think. Yeah. And there is also apparently drawing of lots for the invitational tomorrow, as I as I see on the on the seven p.m. Uh, they play yeah. schedule uh, schedule on our site. So plenty of events uh, planned for all of you wonderful people on Chess Twenty Four. Do tune in. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks thanks for watching and keeping us company.